Hello champs, welcome to Newton Gate where we make your dreams come true. Today we will discuss the next part of sexual reproduction in flowering plants. So in our last video we have discussed microsporogenesis. In this video we will discuss megasporogenesis and the female reproductive part. So we know that gynosium is the female reproductive part or we call it as pistil. So it is the innermost wall of the flower and it consists of stigma, style, ovary. Ovary have many ovules that are termed as megasporangia which are attached to a tissue inside the ovary. And inside the ovary there is placenta then ovarian cavity or locutes. So the placenta is the process of placenta covering the entire ovules is the or the uh, separating the locules of a ovary is termed as the placentation. Number of ovules may vary. It may be one uh, in case of wheat, paddy, mango to many in case of watermelon, orchids etc. Now carpal can be monocarpillary or it can be multicarpillary. Monocarpillary means when it consists of only single carpal and multicarpillary means when it consists of many carpels. Now this is the term, the new term that is syncarpus and apocarpus ovules. Now syncarpus ovules mean when pistils are fused together is termed as syncarpus and apocarpus means when pistils are free. Okay. This is the structure of a gynosium. So here you can see gynosium consists of these three parts. The upper part is the stigma. This is the slender stalk called the style. And this is the basal portion ovary. So style connects this ovary to the stigma. Okay. So here you can see if you cut a section of this ovary you will get the this portion. Okay, so this is the two lobular structure. There, there is an ovule, and this wall it is, it is called the ovary wall. Okay, so here are the ovules. Okay, and this is one carpel. This is one carpel, and this is another carpel. So this is bicarpellar. Okay, when the carpel consists of two carpel, it is termed as bicarpel. So this is the structure of a compound pistil. various kinds of ovules. First is ortho orthotropous ovule where the micropyle, chalaza and funicle are in a straight line. So it, it, we can found it in cypress. So here the micropyle, chalaza and the funicle all are in a straight line. Okay, so it is the orthotropous ovule. Now what is anatropous ovule? When the ovule turns at 180 degrees. So here the ovule is turning at 180 degree angle. Thus, it looks like an inverted shape. Okay, micropyle lies close to the hilum. So, this is a micropylar end which lies close to the hilum that is found in 90% of angiosperm families consisting of this kind of ovule that is anatropous ovule. Next is the campylotropous ovule that is found in cruciferi or leguminosi family. Their, their ovule is curved more or less at right angle. Okay, so here you can see the ovule is in curved position and it is at right angle. Okay, so micropylar is, in, is like bending, is bent down slightly. Okay, next is hemi anatropous ovule. Ovule turns at 90 degree angle and uh, upon the funicle or body of ovule which is at right angle to the funicle. We can found it in ranunculus type or ranunculacy. Next is amphitropous ovule or ovule which is which is as well as an embryo sac is curved like horseshoe shape. We can found it in poppy, lemna etc. That is this kind. Okay this is amphitropous ovule which is like it is curved like horseshoe shape. Next is the carcinotropous. 
Cynicotropus. The ovule turns at more than 360 degree angle, so funicle becomes coiled around the ovule. Example Opuntia, Plambagenesi, etc. This is the structure of an anatropous ovule or the megasporangium, what we say. Okay. So, this is the Chalazal end and this is nucellus. This, this is the outer part of the nucellus, that is the integument. Now, it is the antipodal cells and this is the polar nuclei or we can call it like uh, central nuclei. Then it is the embryo sac. So, embryo sac is consisting inside the megasporangium or ovule. Okay. So, this is the egg. Egg cell or oosphere, and this two synergies supporting this egg cell. Okay, and these are the vascular transfuniculus, and this is the micropylorid. So, the chalazal and micropylorid is are, are at the opposite sides of a ovule, okay, of, of, of opposite sides. This is a structure of a typical anatropous ovule. Now, funicle which is attached to the placenta by a means of a stalk called funicle. When a ovule is attached to the placenta by a stalk, that is termed as funicle. What is hilum? The body of the ovule fuses with funicle in the region called hilum. So, hilum is nothing but a junction between the ovule and funicle. Integuments. Each ovule has one or two protective envelopes called antigumens. It can be inner or outer. So, these are the protective part. Micropyle is the small opening at one end of the ovule, which is termed as the micropylarity. And chalaza is always at the opposite of the micropylar end, representing the basal part of the ovule. Nucellus is the tissue that encloses the embryo sac. We have already seen the uh, picture or the diagram of the anatropous ovule. So, this is the structure and we are describing, the, describing this structure. So, embryo sac consists of embryo sac that is the female gametophyte part is, con, is, is present inside the ovule. Okay. So, an ovule generally has a single embryo sac formed from a megaspore through reduction division. So, nuclear, this is nuclear and seven cell. Okay, so this has an egg apparatus which is present at the microbiolar end, which has also two synergids and an egg. Next is the filiform uh, apparatus which has got synergids, special thickening at microbiolar end. It guides the pollen tube. Okay, so the function of the synergids is the is to guide the pollen tube. Antipodal cells are present uh, and in the chala towards the chala chala cell end, which are three in number. And the two haploid, haploid nuclei is present at polar end below the egg apparatus. So, megaspores are also called as macrospores, which are a type of spore found in heterosporous plants. So, they germinate into a female gametophyte, which produce two egg cells. These egg cells are fertilized by the male gametophyte developing from the microspore. Now, what is megasporogenesis? Megasporogenesis is the process of formation of megaspore. Now, megaspores are formed inside the ovule of seed plants. A diploid cell in the ovule is called the megasporocyte. This megaspore mother cell or MMC undergoes meiotic division and gives rise to four haploid megaspores. In most plants, only one of the megaspores develop into megagametophyte and the other three degenerates. In gymnosperms and flowering plants, this megaspore is produced inside the new cells of the ovule. So, megaspore, the mother cell, which is produced inside the new cells of the ovule. So, angiosperms exhibit three types of megasporogenesis. One is monosporin, bisporin, and tetra. Megasporocyte enlarges and its cytoplasm becomes very dense. The nucleus enlarges in preparation for meiosis. 
Now the what happens to the integuments? They develop from the ovule epidermis. This envelops the mega gametophyte and it becomes incomplete and leaves the micropyle through which the pollen tube enters. Two haploid nuclei are then created. This divide again to produce a cell with four nuclei. So this four haploid nuclei divide again to produce a cell with eight nuclei and this process is termed as free nuclear division. Following nuclear migrations and cell formation, the mature mega gametophyte, that is embryo sac, is formed, which is typically composed of an egg apparatus. Egg apparatus consists of one egg and two synergies, which is present at the micropylar end of the mega gametophyte, and the three antipodal cells, which are found in the chalazal end of the mega gametophyte, which gradually disintegrates. So this is the structure of the embryo sac. One, you can see functional megaspore enlarges, mitotic division helps, and the two nuclei move towards the opposite poles. So the nuclei move towards the opposite poles. Uh, wall formation only after this change. So this is chalazal end. There are three antipodals. This is the chalazal end, and this is the micropylar end. So here you can see the three. Antipodal cells are present, and in the micropylar end, there is the egg cell, which uh, and the synergies which protects the egg cell. Okay, and the remaining two new two nuclei polar, which is present in the central position, and also termed as the central cells, two polar nuclei or the central cell. This is the mature embryo sac. This is the chalazal end. This is the micropylar end. This is the polar nuclei, central cell. This is the egg cell and the synergies. And this is the filiform apparatus. This is finger like projections. Now we will discuss fertilization in flowering plants. So we have seen that how microsporogenesis and megasporogenesis happens. Then it is the time to discuss about fertilization. What happens in fertilization in flowering plants? When a pollen grain reaches the stigma, a small tube grows out of it. Okay, so this tube called the pollen tube, which carries two male gametes and the and then enters the ovule. One of the male gametes fuses with the female gamete and form a single cell called a zygote. So all this entire process is termed as fertilization. This is the gynosium part. Here is the stigma. So here you can see this is a flower. Then it is the gynosium part. It has been magnified. So what happens next? Pollen grain comes and sits at this uh, stigma. Then pollen tube germinates. Okay, from the pollen grain, a pollen tube starts germinating. Then it has got two types of nucleus. One is the generative nucleus. Another one is the tube nucleus. Then what happens? This mitotic division of generative nucleus form two male gametes, and this tube nucleus disintegrates. Okay. Then these two male gametes enter this embryo sac through the micropylar end. One two out of one male gamete out of the two fuse one male gamete fuses with the egg nucleus to form the diploid sac. Now what happens to the other male gamete? Other male gamete fuses with this two polar nuclei to form the triploid endosperm nucleus. That is why it is termed as double fertilization because two types of fertilization is taking place here. One is one male gamete fuses with the egg cell and another male gamete fuses with the polar nuclei. So two types of product, two products are there. One is the 3N endosperm nucleus. Why 3N? Why 3N? Because, because two polar nuclei, two. So one, uh, 
this 3 3 n nucleus because this 3 n nucleus forms from the two polar nuclei when fuses with the one axis so 2 plus 1 equals to 3 3 n endosperm nucleus and this is the 2 n zygote 1 plus n male gamete and then the xn okay that is why here double fertilization takes place in many flowers ovary swells after fertilization to become fruit but and in some plants like pea ovary hardens to form the pod so ovary turns into seeds and ov ovule turns into seed and ovary turns into fruit so the walls of the ovules become hard and the ovule becomes seeds and the zygote divides repeatedly and forms the embryo inside the seed the petals, sepals, and the other parts usually dry off and fall. Dry up and fall. Okay. So this is the ovule part to seed, which is developing. So they are, the integuments become the seed coat, the central cell become the endosperm, and the zygote becomes the embryo. Now pollen pistol interaction. All events from deposition of pollen grains on stigma, entry of pollen tube into ovule, is termed as the pollen pistil interaction. Identification of compatible or incompatible pollen grains by stigma is a part of pollen pistil interaction. A dynamic process involving pollen recognition followed by promotion or inhibition of the pollen. Here, chemical interaction between pollen and stigma takes place. Compatible pollen is accepted by stigma, which initiates post-pollination events. Now, what is artificial hybridization? It is a crop improvement program which uh, involves desired experiments, including pollen grains, which are used for pollination. And the stigma here is protected from the contamination, or you can say from unwanted pollen. So, what is emasculation and bagging? Emasculation means when the stigma is like when the sti stigma attains, uh, when the stigma of bagged flower attains receptivity, mature pollen grains collected from anthers of the male parent and are dusted on the stigma, and the flowers are rebagged and the fruits are allowed to develop. So, female parent bears bisexual flowers and this removal of anthers from the flower bud before the anther dehesis using a pair of forceps. So this is termed as emasculation. And what is bagging? These emasculated flowers have to be covered with a bag of suitable size, which is generally made up of butter paper to prevent contamination of this unwanted stigma on uh, stigma. So this type is this method is termed as the bagging method. So here I have discussed the important MCQs. So these are some important MCQs which is very important for any kind of competitive exams or in your boards also. You can practice in your home. Here are the MCQs. So please let us know that how do you like this video and don't forget to like subscribe and share our video please follow us on facebook twitter and instagram for more details visit our website www.newtongate.in or you can call us on these numbers thank you